Hello, friends and family from around the world. This is Mike with Daily Events Worldwide, and we are on August 2nd, 2023. Welcome to another surviving day on the planet, and welcome to the Daily Do, giving you your space weather update as well, earthquakes, volcanoes, and world weather. Checking out here the last 48 hours on our sun, still producing M-class solar flares and strong, constant, long-duration C-class solar flares. So geomagnetic instability is and will continue here for the next week or so, as we do have a large cannibal CME on its way, looking at the last 48 hours incoming. This is where we can see sunspot regions cresting into view. So I do believe it was a plasma ejection that produced the coronal mass ejection. Watch in the center disk here in the outgoing positions. But it is an Earth-facing event in the last few images right there. Looking at multi-spectrum, notable here, the plasma filaments in the northern hemisphere. You can see them there, the long darkened lines. And then activity here at 2 o'clock and 7 o'clock incoming and outgoing matching instability regions. We still have 10 sunspot regions on the Earth-facing star. Amazing images here brought to you by Solar Dynamics Observatory mixed with daily events worldwide. Another light here. See all of the plasma in action and as well our heliosphere which as well orchestrates and helps us visualize the sun's magnetic field. Multiple sunspot regions still in effect. So heads up, everybody, and be ready. Looking at space weather conditions currently, we are under R1 minor radio blackout impacts expected. And for tomorrow, we're expecting a geomagnetic, a G1 storm. Solar X-ray flux remains in a heightened C range after seeing a couple strong M-class solar flares multiple C-class solar flares, and as well, long duration. Geomagnetic activity sitting at KP4. Now let's have a look at the ISWA space prediction spiral, showing a small CME taking off towards our planet, which is the little yellow circle on the right-hand side of all this energy coming from our sun. But watch as I refresh, as we are expecting another CME, and this is a big one, folks. This will be coming in for the 5th and the 6th. So on my birthday, August 6th, we will be expecting a large space weather event from this cannibal CME. That is a huge one. A lot of plasma associated with that. Look at that. That little yellow circle, that is Earth. That is us. Having a look at Lasco 3, showing all of the sun's activities here the last two days. As you can see, energy that takes off all around the center disk of this view means it is a halo CME. So that is earth directed one and then earth directed another one in the most recent images, one there. And then this is the one that is coming our way, the most recent CME. Having a look at the Aurora forecast, probability of Aurora for North America, Canada tonight, 10 to 30% chance, greater chances over Russia and parts of Northern Europe. But I'm sure this will change for tomorrow night and over the next few days. So stay tuned to daily events worldwide. Now let's get to earthquakes here for the past 24 hours as we have seen an increase. We did see a sizable largest earthquake today and as well the deepest here in the Fiji region a 5.7 magnitude ringing out at a 596 kilometer depth so that is notable because not everybody knows this but most times after a deep earthquake we can expect a larger shallower earthquake to follow carrying on here notable earthquakes through the Indian plate and as well in Etria parts of northern Africa 4.7 and 4.4 there in between the Arabian plate and Africa as well, Bolivia, notable earthquake there, 4.4, 250 kilometer depth though. Caribbean plate seeing minor and regular activity. Notable 4.1 here reported in Neeland, California. This was an area I had noted yesterday. 
Now let's get to USGS 281 earthquakes the past 24 hours, and that's what they're reporting here. But notable here, earthquakes occurring at Yellowstone, northwest of Yellowstone, looking at about 22 earthquakes throughout the, this region here. But the small swarm that is occurring is minor, but notable. All of this activity and moving northwestwards towards the Pacific Northwest. Activity is still continuing all along the west coast from Mount Baker and southward. Closer look here at the Salton Sea region. This is what I was talking about yesterday, waiting for something to erupt there in regards to earthquakes. So most likely an earthquake swarm coming to Neeland, California. Salton Sea. And then Hawaii, they saw a notable earthquake here off the west coast, southwest coast of Hawaii, 3.8 at Hawaiian Ocean View. F only 14 earthquakes across the whole island of Hawaii. But notable, 3.8 there, Hawaii region. Going to be keeping an eye on a volcanic activity throughout there. As it's been pretty quiet through Kilauea Summit Caldera, a lot of energy has been released from the Iceland volcano, but deep earthquakes there in the Fiji region, expecting something larger to come as we did see some activity off the coast of Oregon as well. So maybe up into the Cascades or towards Alaska, keeping an eye on multiple volcanoes that are active throughout the Aleutian Islands. This is a look at the last seven days for shakers across the world, Mid-Atlantic Ridge, Quiet, North American Plate, Quiet, Central America as well. So, heads up. Having a look here at World Weather, brought to you by Zoom Earth. This is an app you all can download. Having a look here at all of the fires that are breaking out across Western Canada and Northern Canada, Northwest Territories. Large fire there, out of control, burning over 580,000 hectares. So large fires, large wildfire alert and season. This is early, lots of time left here, left in summer. As well, fires breaking out across Oregon and up into Montana, northern Idaho, and all across the Rockies. So stay aware and prepared. Having a look at satellite imagery, we do have air quality advisory in effect for Ontario and northeastern United States from all of that wildfire smoke sweeping in. Also looking here over the Atlantic Ocean as we do have a large dust storm that is forming here off, off of Africa. Looking at satellite imagery, you can see all of the dust particulates being picked up from a strong low, leaving the coast of Africa there. And as well, we have Hurricane Dora, who is tracking westward here at as a category two right now, packing winds of 175 kilometers per hour. But yeah, big dust storm heading off the coast of Africa, the big story, and as well, lots of moisture heading up in through central Atlantic with 96 L. Big low here developing across western United States. Intense heat and high pressure ridge over the Gulf of Mexico is going to help intensify extreme weather breaking out here over the next couple weeks. But other than that, no major hurricanes developing in the Atlantic for the long range forecast. Not too much is forming here, but tons of moisture rolling across the equator out of Guatemala right now in behind Hurricane Adora. Have a quick look here at low pressure systems versus high pressure. High pressure is red, low pressure is blue. Now very deep lows in the southern hemisphere right now, 948 millibars. That is a very low and dense systems in the southern hemisphere right now. Watch for these to continue and move northward up into the northern hemisphere for our season. Quick look here at temperature forecast for the next few days. 
as things will be cooling across western Canada through BC. BC interior looking at 10 degrees, but very warm temperatures up through Alaska, Northwest Territories, Manitoba, and of course all around the Gulf states. Here is a look at uh, sorry, Typhoon Dot Surrey. Yeah, Doc Surrey. Typhoon Dot Surrey, who just missed Taipei, Taiwan, but is set here to head straight east and then north into the southern islands of Japan. So, thoughts and prayers going out to everybody affected there. Multiple flood, terrible situations there. Overlooking here, a little weather forecast for most of the United States and Canada. Large low coming out of the Hudson Bay, going to cool things down. But then high pressure ridge moves in from the Gulf and pumps in a lot of warm and humid air. So watch for stormy conditions here to continue all week, as I said. But then by next Monday into Tuesday, a very strong low develops here, moving through Ontario and then up into eastern Canada. Big low there off the coast of B.C., so that's going to be bringing in a lot of much-needed moisture for all the fires northward. Just look at there. One, two, three, four large lows spinning around the northern hemisphere right now. And forecast here in the long range. Quick look here over the rest of the world. Monsoon season continues through parts of Southeast Asia and India. But watch for extreme weather event here to break out through parts of Central Europe. August 6th into the 7th as a vigorous low here develops for parts of Northern Europe and Eastern. Watch for extreme weather event there. Much love everybody and I appreciate all of the support and I appreciate you watching and subscribing to daily events worldwide. Thank you for all the memberships. Thank you for all the comments. I'm doing my best here to get caught up on them all and keep you guys updated daily. Quick look here over the rest of the world. Typhoon tracks and forecast future typhoons. Nothing major developing in the long range. And then some interesting weather forecast here for Australia. Large low whizzing by southern Australia affecting Tasmania moisture moving in from the east for parts of New South Wales and northward and New Caledonia high pressure ridge moving in for long range hope you enjoyed the show everybody much love and thank you so much for watching stay aware and prepared stay young and have fun and get your daily do bye bye now If you enjoyed today's video, please hit that like button, subscribe, share with your friends and family from across the world.